Hello, and welcome to the STEMC Studio channel. In this video, we will take a look at how reflections are defined in geometric algebra. In doing so, we will discover a new geometric object that we call a rotor, and this rotor is responsible for rotating things, in our case vectors, but in higher dimensions, it can rotate any element of the geometric algebra in a nice uniform way. The rotor is also going to be extremely important to us because the rotor is the analog of the position of a body which we want in 2D physics simulations. So just as the position of a body tells you where the body is, the rotor is going to be used to rotate the body from a standard configuration, which is normally kind of maybe up, to some particular configuration, which is the current attitude of the body. So that rotor is often called the attitude. But anyway, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's see how ro rotations are defined and how incredibly simply, simple it is once you start with reflections. Okay, let's begin. So here's the idea. From a previous video, uh, a reflection of a vector in a plane which has a normal n, or in our case, because we're in two dimensions, that plane is actually a line, um, is given by this expression here. The reflected vector is created by a sandwich of the unit normal uh, surrounding the vector that we want to reflect, and a minus sign is put at the front. And here, the multiplication that, that you're actually seeing is actually the geometric product that we've seen before. So for example, here's vector A, here's a unit vector N, which is perpendicular to this line here. And when A is reflected in that line, so imagine this line to be like a mirror, when A is reflected, it ends up where the green arrow is. Okay, so all, that's all, all pretty simple, and that was described in the previous video, video on reflections. Now, there is a theorem that says that two reflections compose to give a rotation. Okay, so let's just kind of like look at, look at that in our diagram here. We have the vector A being reflected first in this plane here where the normal is n, so it ends up over here. And I've set up another normal here with, th with this line here, and that vector here then gets reflected in that plane. So if you look at what's happened, the blue vector here has been rotated over into this position. And you can see actually, because I've done a fairly simple example by similar triangles, that we've got one unit here, one unit here, two units here, two units here. So the length of the vector is preserved as you'd expect. And the rotation angle is actually twice the angle, this angle in here is 45 degrees, is actually twice the angle between either the planes or the unit normals. So while it's fairly easy to prove using a two column proof, a Euclidean style proof, um, that um, two reflections do compose to give a rotation, this may not very be very convincing if you're concerned about how this works in three dimensions. So a more rigorous way of doing it would be to actually prove that this expression here actually really does give a, give a rotation. And I'm not going to give that proof here. Um, in fact, I haven't done it myself, although I've done part of the proof. Um, but I believe we could actually do that, prove that this rigorously does give a rotation. And uh, maybe that'll be a subject of a future video. A rotation um, does result from um, two reflections. And, you know, from the theorem, the angle through which it rotates is twice this angle in here. Okay. Now, we can separate out this initial MN and give it a different name and call it a rotor. Okay. So we call it a rotor by convention, we use the, the word R, the symbol R. And then we can write our reflected vector is the rotor multiplied by the original vector, and then multiplied by the reverse, that little tilde sign over the top of the R, recall, means the reverse of R. And the reverse of R is, of course, N times M, which is what we have here. 
I've added a couple of notes here because we've been working in two dimensions and you know you may not be con convinced that this is going to work in three dimensions um, or how exactly it will work in three dimensions so there, there are a couple of things that I, I at this point I can only you know tell you that this is true um, and until we until we meet three dimensions you know you won't be able to verify it but this double-sided rule of having R on the left and then R tilde, the reverse of R on the right, is what you need in 3D to make the rotations come out correctly, or what you need generally in, in any algebra to make rotations come out correctly. In 2D, you actually don't need it. Um, just as in complex numbers, you can perform a rotation by just multiplying from one side. Um, however, we're going to use this more general formula because this really is kind of like the correct formula for rotations. The second thing I, sh I, I should tell you is that this rotor formula, formula also works to rotate other things like bivectors, for example. But since in 2D we only have the bivector of the plane, that's not very interesting. If you rotate the bivector in the plane, nothing really happens. Um, so you can't see very much. But if, if this was in three dimensions, this would actually correctly rotate bivectors as well. Okay, so let's go and look at um, the, uh, the, the code that actually generated this diagram uh, just to see how that happened. And then let's go and actually calculate um, this formula here uh, to verify that uh, you know everything actually does work okay so we'll go and hide our documentation and uh, here is our code and here is our output okay now I'm not going to go through the entirety of this because much of it is similar to um, to the reflection code that we did in the previous video but what I will say is that this these these vectors were actually generated uh, using constructions from JSX graph. So, for example, um, I can with JSX JSX graph I can create the reflection of a point. Okay, like here is a point A, and I can reflect it in mirror N. That's just a perpendicular, and so there's a kind of a way to actually generate this. You know this point from this point and then this point from this point and then I just draw the arrows to those points so the point I want to make is that this construction was constructed entirely using JSX graph and so it really doesn't have a lot to do with our geometric algebra so what I want to do right now is I want to uh, compute this vector here starting with this vector here using our geometric number and i want to show that the vector that we compute in all cases is the same so we'll come down here and the first thing i'm going to do is uh well i was going to construct the rotor but i think the first thing i'm going to do is actually just construct it the reflected vector explicitly so we need m times n Oops, m times n times a, and and then times n, and then times m. So let's write that to the DOM. Here's b, and as you can see, b is minus 2e1, so it's minus 2 in the e1 direction, and then add, and then we've got a little bit of a rounding error, but we add 1 e2, so essentially it's plus e2 which is that. So it is actually correct. Okay. Now we could have factored out, if we look over here, we could have factored out this m times n into a rotor r. And then instead of computing m times n here, we could have used r. And we could have used r dot reverse. Okay. And that also computes the same thing. Or we could use the operator approach, which is to put a tilde in front of the R, and that works too. Okay, so 
that somewhat should convince you that we're computing the same thing. Let's let's change some of these angles a little bit. So um, theta is the angle that n makes to the x-axis, and phi is the angle that m makes to the x-axis. Let's change phi to be 90 degrees. Okay, so m is pointing upwards now. So a first gets reflected in this plane, so it ends up over here. And then this vector gets reflected in this plane here. So it comes down to here. So we can see the result is minus 1 E1 and then minus 2 E2. And here's B minus 1 E1 and minus 2 E2. Okay, all good. So one final thing. Let's take a look at our rotor. Our rotor is the product of two vectors. And so we expect it to be something like uh, a scalar because the, the geometric product of two vectors is their dot product, which is a scalar, plus a bivector, which is the wedge product. So let's just take a look at that one minute. If you look at this rotor, you'll see that we have a very, very small number. It's actually scientific notation saying this is practically zero. And the rotor is actually minus E1 wedge E2. So it's really, um, as you might expect, it's, it's actually, um, it looks a lot like M and N, which are unit vectors, which are perpendicular. So you've got E1 wedge E2. Let's actually change the angle one moment and let make um, M have a 45 degree angle. Okay, and you'll see now that our rotor is uh, 0.7071 minus 0.7071 E1 wedge E2. Okay, so what we're expecting is that our rotor um, will have a scalar part and it will have a bivector part. We will see in future videos that actually this rotor can be expressed as something like a cosine of an angle and a sine of an angle with a quantity uh, that is that squares to minus one. And you should know that E1 wedge E2, um, which is just E1 E2, squares to minus one. So essentially what we're looking at with our rota is a manifestation of a sort of generalized Euler formula, the e, d I, e to the i pi plus one equals zero. Remember that formula? Or e to the i theta is cos theta plus i sine theta. That formula actually works for anything where, where i can be replaced by e1 wedge e2. So we'll see that in future videos. The other thing that we will see in future videos is that a rotor from two directions uh, can be calculated um, by, that is a rotor that rotates from one direction to another direction can be calculated by considering the vector, the unit vector that is halfway between them. Okay, so if you, if you kind of compute that rotor and you make sure that you normalize this in between um, rotor uh, to one, then you'll get an expression for a rotor that rotates from this vector to this vector. Okay, so that takes into account the, the normal angle doubling uh, that we see with, with uh, the double-sided application of the rotor. So that's how it works. In geometric algebra, rotations are very easily composed out of two reflections uh, just by performing the two successive rotations together. And we get uh, an angle of rotation, which is twice the angle between the two vectors. And in addition, if we so desire, we can c compute a formula for our rota, which will give us precisely a rotation through a given angle. That we will do in a future video, but if you actually want to try to compute that rotor yourself and try it out, uh, go ahead. All right, I hope this was useful. Uh, this is going to allow us to move on 
and uh, use our rotor as a kinematic variable uh, when we're doing physics simulations. So that's going to be super exciting. We've actually got now got all of the tools that we need to really progress and do uh, basically the elements of a physics engine. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, hit the like button so I know that uh, I'm on track. Uh, and if you want to see more videos like this, then uh, do hit the subscribe button below. If you have any suggestions, please leave comments. Okay, take care and uh, happy coding. Bye-bye.